when you talked about when you wrote your first book um the in the then late 75 you said you were you were in uh chaos type deal uh, you know your kids weren't they weren't there anymore they they moved back away uh and you said you were at your lowest almost and that was when um is that accurate or did i yes yeah okay. in fact that yeah i was uh i was divorced with custody of four children i had been in florida as president of the Jonas Salk Foundation, he's the one that developed the first polio vaccine. So we had been through that, but uh, so I was in a situation where uh, I had to divest the Salk Foundation because he didn't want to be involved anymore. So basically I was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the worst winter of my life with as a divorced father of four with custody of children who wanted to go back home to California. They did not want to be with me in Pittsburgh in a cold winter with no income. I had just enough income left to try to look for a job. And my kids headed for California and I had to go back and visit them. So it was at a low point. And I finally stuck my head out and said, I'm not going to take it anymore. And I dusted off part of a, an old manuscript I had started to write on what winners do and winning and some of the little talks I had given on a cassette tape. And I wrote my best work at the worst of times because I wrote it for me. So instead of writing about all my successes, I wrote about all the things I wasn't doing, needed to do in order to be a winner. And it was that point in life when I now realize at the worst of times, I need to be at my best. So during COVID, when I am immune, my immune system is challenged because of cancer and because of heart, uh, some heart infections, at my age, my immune system is m more challenged and I need to be at my absolute best when things are not going well. And that's why I think there's a lesson to be learned about resiliency is that when things are going well, we tend to coast. We tend to get complacent. We tend to feel entitled. And because we're, we're here and we're, we're where we are and things are going well, but we don't know that tomorrow might bring the roller coaster to, to a valley instead of a peak. And that's why my whole emphasis is shifting on being resilient able to meet challenges and to be at your A game. So what I'm saying is when the alarm goes off inside of you, the alarm, instead of being something that stuns you in your tracks, that frightens you to no activity, that makes you so worried about the future that you, you don't take action because you don't know what to do, that's the very time when you reach deep inside of yourself and bring out the best of you when you really need to, which is when you're challenged. And I think having that, that reservoir of resiliency is the one difference as to why people overcome failure because failure is the fertilizer of success. Don't roll in it. It doesn't smell good. You don't like it. But if you'll sprinkle your failures and not repeat them, it will grow you as learning experiences that will, will make you much stronger if you're able to see them as a cul-de-sac. No, not a cul-de-sac, maybe a roadblock that, that is, uh, and, and definitely not a dead end. So it, it's only uh, a temporary learning experience, but failure is not a person. Failure is an event. And that I think is the most important thing I learned from writing my best work at the worst of times.